Welcome back to Dan's On Fandoms. I'm Dan. Wow, what an episode we got this week of Clone Wars. We have finally arrived at the last arc of the series, and this episode, titled Old Friends Not Forgotten, was everything I could have asked for and more. There's a lot to digest with this one, so let's dive right into the action. The episode begins slightly different from what we're accustomed to, with what looks like more of the beginnings of an opening crawl that we're accustomed to seeing with Star Wars films, and we even get the old school Lucasfilm limited production thrown in there. The recap at the beginning of the episode lets us know we're getting right up to where Revenge of the Sith starts, as we learn General Grievous and the Separatist forces have launched major offenses and are laying siege to planets in the Outer Rim. When Anakin sees Padme for the first time in Revenge of the Sith, he mentions the fact that he didn't think he would return to Coruscant anytime soon because of the Outer Rim sieges. We also see the image of the Jedi Council that we saw in the season's trailer, oh hey Caleb do and Depa Balaba, and I am heartbroken that we see Ayala Sakura and Plo Koon fighting on the planets we see them die on in Revenge of the Sith. We then come to the planet Yerbana, where Commander Cody and the 212th Clone Division are pinned down on a bridge by Separatist forces. Our homeboy Obi-Wan arrives to help the clones, and Anakin arrives soon thereafter. Anakin, as cocksure as ever, single-handedly walks down the Jedi army with one of his sure fire plans, which is to pretend like the Republic army is surrendering, only to draw out the super tactical droid and destroy it. I love how this seems very reminiscent of what his son Luke will do years later in The Last Jedi. While Anakin is speaking, we see R2-D2, Captain Rex, and the 501st are hanging on to the underbelly of the bridge waiting to pounce on the droid army. As soon as Anakin destroys the super tactical droid, the 501st fly in on jetpacks and start kicking some droid ass. The 501st looked so badass wearing the white and blue armor with jetpacks. Anakin and Obi-Wan are then told by Admiral Yalaren they need to return to the Republic capital ship as someone has sent a frequency using the subspace frequency fulcrum. I love this so much because now we know where Ahsoka got fulcrum from, which was the code name she and other spies in Star Wars Rebels used. I also like that they dropped a little nugget about Saw Gerrera still fighting on Onderon. Anyway, once Obi-Wan and Anakin arrive on the Republic Star Destroyer, they're welcomed by a hollow of Ahsoka and Bo-Katan. I loved how speechless Anakin was when he initially realized it was Ahsoka. Ahsoka tells the Jedi they have information on Maul and where he is. Ahsoka and Bo-Katan then soon arrive on the Star Destroyer, and it is so stark the differences in how Anakin and Obi-Wan are reacting to Ahsoka returning. Anakin is beyond elated even going so far as stating that Ahsoka leaving the Jedi Order allowed her to be where she truly needed to be to find Maul. But Obi-Wan is pretty damn callous about Ahsoka returning, and even treats her coldly the entire time she's on the capital ship with them. I wonder if he was more hurt by Ahsoka leaving the Order than we initially saw, and that's now coming out? Or is it that he's just callous towards someone who deserted the Jedi Order? I'm honestly not sure, but I wasn't expecting Obi-Wan to act the way that he did towards Ahsoka. As mentioned, Anakin is so happy and excited to see Ahsoka when she arrives, but she just wants to get right down to business. Ahsoka and Bo-Katan then tell Anakin and Obi-Wan that Maul's on Mandalore in the capital Sundari, and they need the help of the Republic to lay siege to the city and to capture Maul. Obi-Wan is hesitant to have the Republic partake in this siege, as the Republic's involvement would break several treaties that are a hundred years old, and will draw the Republic into yet another conflict. Obi-Wan wants to confer with the Jedi Council before making a decision, and Bo-Katan drops the Satine Bomb, and ugh. We see the humanity in Obi-Wan return that wasn't present once Ahsoka arrived on the ship. Anakin then takes Ahsoka to show her a surprise, and all the clone troopers they pass are saluting Ahsoka. Ugh. Guys, 
all the goddamn feels. We then see Captain Rex and the 501st who have painted their helmets with the likeness of Ahsoka's face. Even though I knew this was coming, I still couldn't contain my smile, which was seriously from ear to ear. Right before Anakin can give Ahsoka her lightsabers back though, Obi-Wan informs them that General Grievous has attacked Coruscant, and Ahsoka is upset that the Jedi won't help Mandalore and digs into Obi-Wan, telling him this is why people have lost faith in the Jedi Order. Anakin then quells the fire between the two of them, stating he'll divide the 501st and will promote Captain Rex to commander so that he can lead the mission with Ahsoka as an advisor. Before Anakin and Ahsoka part ways, Anakin gives her back her lightsabers, which are now blue, with Anakin saying they're a little better this way. I'm still curious why Ahsoka's lightsabers are now blue. Is this a metaphor that some of Anakin is still in Ahsoka? I'm not exactly sure. But this scene pulled at my heartstrings so much. As the two part ways, Ahsoka merely says good luck to Anakin, and I just wanted them to give each other a hug and say may the force be with you. Knowing they won't see each other again until their duel on Malachor years later is heartbreaking, thinking this was their final goodbye to each other as friends. Bo-Katan and Ahsoka Ahsoka are then en route to Sundari with the 501st, and All Max busted ass tries telling them they're breaking Mandalore's treaty with the Republic. Almac then tells Gar Saxon, whom we last saw getting judo chopped by Sabine Wren in Season 3 of Rebels, to prepare the Mandalorian forces for an attack. He also sends Rook Cast to inform the Syndicate of the upcoming invasion. What a punk Gar Saxon is. Ursa Wren then informs Bo-Katan that Saxon is scrambling his defenses and things start popping off. Mandalorians with jetpacks begin attacking Republic forces, and man, was this serious so awesome. Ahsoka is jumping from ship to ship, taking out opposing Mandalorians along the way before she's able to make it to ground. Ugh, this scene was seriously so damn good. Bo-Katan then heads to the throne room to take out Almac, who is wearing some sweet ass armor, and she takes him down quite easily. Rex heads to Ursa Wren at the docks to bolster her forces and prevent Maul from escaping, and Ahsoka heads to the lower levels of the city, where Gar Saxon and Rook Cast have set a trap for Ahsoka's forces. Once the trap is sprung, the clones with Ahsoka are taken out and Ahsoka finds herself encircled by opposing Mandalorians. And then, out of the shadows, comes Maul, who tells Ahsoka he was hoping for Kenobi before the credits roll to no music. Holy crap, what an episode. I was seriously floored by the end. Right from the beginning, as the old school Lucasfilm limited production came onto the screen, followed by the all too familiar theme music of Star Wars, I knew we were in for quite a treat, and there wasn't a moment in this episode that wasn't spectacular. There were so many wonderful moments throughout this episode, and I can't believe we still get two more before it's all over. But what did you guys think? What was your favorite moment from the episode and what are you hoping to see in next week's episode? Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and would like to help out the channel, please like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to us. You can also follow Dan's on Fandoms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at Dan's on Fandoms. Thanks for watching and stay nerdy.